Hi everyone, it's Chris at Cork and Crown with another cider to try. And not only a cider, but some cheese as well. Some cheese as well. Uh, let's talk about the cider first though, shall we? Yes, please, Chris, that's why we're here. Okay, well, it's one we've tried before. It arrived the other day though, and it is a new batch. It's a new vintage, I believe. And it is a secret orchard, Exmoor Mellow, something by Joe Healy up on the eastern edge of Exmoor, um, on the Nettlecombe Estate. Uh, beautiful part of the world, amazing up there, really nice. The Secret Orchard is in fact a secret orchard. It's, a, it's like a medieval walled orchard on the estate. I think Joe went to a party there once. Um, he'd, always, he'd always wanted to make cider, he went to a party there and he discovered that they had this orchard there. So he said to the guy who owned it, what do you do with the apples? And the guy said, nothing. So he said, well, can I make cider with it? And the guy said, yeah, all right. So that's how Secret Orchard was born. He's getting apples from further afield now. Last time I was there, he was getting a massive delivery, um, like two tons, I think, of various bittersweets Harry and, and sharps. I think Harry Masters Jersey, Yarrington Mill, a few different things in there. Uh, I helped him put down a load of tarpaulins that the truck was going to tip the apples onto. So, yeah, well, I, I shot off before they arrived. Uh, just got out in time, in fact. I just had to got out before the lorry pulled in, which was pretty lucky. Um, so yeah, this is his blend. Uh, so each vintage is going to be different. The first vintage I had, which I guess was a 2018, was totally different to the 2019. And I guess this is going to be 2020, 2020, uh, that we're now having in 2021. I assume, I think, all wild yeast, all bit of sweets, just in plastic. Uh, so not in barrels, so inert containers. Um, yeah, usually a very pure expression of fruit is what you get from Joe's cider. I'm going to have a cheese with it. Randomly picked this cheese, just happened to have it, uh, so it may work, may not work. It's not a super strong cheese, and this isn't a su super bold cider, so it should be decent balance. But what is it? What is it, Chris? I'll tell you what it is. It's this. It is. Can we get that? Is it going to be too bright? It's going to be too bright. That, I don't know if you can see very well, is Mobie. So Mobie, oh, that's a bit better, isn't it? So you've got Mobie. So it's got this pinkish rind on the outside. So this is a washed rind. It's a mountain cheese. Well, it's from the Jura. Jura is strictly a high plateau rather than sort of alpine, but it's still high altitudes. We call it mountain cheese. semi soft mountain cheese with this dark line through the middle. And a lot of people think this dark line through the middle is blue, but it's not. It's ash. So in, on, on mountains and isolated regions, what they tend to do is they make cheese twice a day because the milk comes out of the animal at blood temperature. You have to heat up milk to make cheese. So rather than let the milk cool down and they have to burn wood to heat it up again, they make cheese in the morning when they milk and in the evening when they milk. So they make cheese twice a day, basically. So with this cheese, to make um, the line denotes the morning milk and the evening milk. So they make the cheese in the evening, get the curds, put the curds in the mould, put ash on top of those curds to keep off things like flies. Then in the morning, they make a new batch of curd, put it on the top. So you have a sandwich of, of ash in between the morning and the evening curd. These days they don't tend to do that thing, it's just, but it's become traditional to do this, so they actually just sprinkle it in as they're moulding and then they put some more curd on the top. But yeah, pink washed rinds, so bee linens, plus lots of other things on the outside. And one time I'm going to have to list all the different sort of bacterium and so forth that you can get on these things, because people used to think it was just bacterium linens, uh, brevi bacterium linens, but it's not. It's more, more co complex than that. But yeah, it's quite delicate. Um, snackable cheese, so quite lactic, sweet, a little bit meaty, good stuff. And, the, and the, the ash you can't try, you can't taste, you can try it, you can't taste it is what I mean to say. So let's open the cider. Weapon of choice, weapon of choice. Let's open up anything on the bottle, anything on the bottle. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Exmoor Miller is a smooth, easy drinking cider with delicious spicy notes blended from high quality varieties including Harry Masters Jersey and Kingston Black, so two classic varieties there. Bought from Somerset. Pop. Interesting lots. Let's pour it out and have a look. So look it's nice colour already. And he's using sort of apples with tannins, so you expect to see a bit of colour in there. Um, yep, nice looking thing. Bright. Can't remember if he filters or not. I suspect he doesn't actually, so maybe he just drops bright. I don't think he filters, I could be wrong, uh, but I think it's forced carbonated, it's not bottle conditioned, um, but not heavily carbonated. So beautiful colour, bright amber that is, very nice amber indeed that is. Let's have a smell. Yeah, I mean, apple-y. It's almost got, it's got a fresh apple character, but also like a slightly autumnal rich, deep sweet apple character as well. Um, 
I mean, it's not malic at all. Any acidity I'm getting is going to be gentle lactic, which is what you'd expect to get in the cheese as well, lactic acid, from lactic acid bacteria. Um, and it's lactic acid bacteria that convert malic acid into lactic acid in, in a cider. So it's the same, same beast produces lactic acid in both products. Yeah, sweet, ripe, aged apple. Like my, I've said this before, like my mum's shed where she's got an apple tree in the garden. It gives loads of apples. She can't use them all up at once. So she puts them in baskets and stores them in the shed and then takes them and cooks with them when she needs to. And when you walk in the shed, it kind of smells like this. It's what it smells like. It's a great smell. I love it. Right, let's taste it. Quite fizzy, not too fizzy. Right on the edge of what I like though. I prefer less uh, fizziness rather than more. But actually once you've poured it out, that will diminish anyway once the bottle's open and you pour it. That'll lessen. So what I got on the, on the nose is coming through on the palate. It's sort of like a sweet, salted, honeyed apple character. Some minerality, acidity, but a lovely gentle lactic acidity, but it's just there to balance the um, balance the sugars in there. This is a medium, not a sickly sweet medium though, it's a nice uh, medium. Um, I've got sweet too, so I can take sweeter ciders than many people, but this is by no means sweet. I mean, I've had medium dry ciders from larger productions that have been sweeter than this. So, you know, it's down to the individual producer to determine if it's sweet, uh, medium sweet or dry. It's nothing to do with the amount of sugar in it which I've mentioned loads of times. I, I apologise for repeating myself, but it's worth repeating, I think. One more sip. Mm. Nice. A little bit of spiciness in there as well. A little bit of spice, just a little bit. The last batch I found actually evolved in bottle. So when I bought it to when I sold the last bottle, it did change quite a lot. Went through an evolution. I think it got a little bit more complexity. So I'd be interested to see how this goes uh, as, as I sort of store it and work my way through it. Right, should we try some cheese? Yes, please, Chris. All right, let's do it. Cheese knife, second weapon of, weapon of choice. And this is a cheese knife, I see. Uh, literally, it's a, it's a specific cheese knife. It's, it's, it's got a bottle opener on, obviously. I mean, everyone needs a bottle opener, doesn't it? Don't they? But it's also got, on the other end, on the side, rather, which I'll like, get that out of the way, this thing, this thing. So I've, I've mentioned this before, but it's quite a long time ago, so some people might not have seen many of these films, so they may not know what this is. So that is a little tiny, what's called a cheese iron. So when you, when you're, um, when you have big format cheeses and you want to test them to see how they're tasting, you don't, you don't want to cut them open, because once you've cut them, you can't stick them back together. So how do you test them without cutting them open? You use something called a cheese iron. So I've got a couple of full-size ones, but this is a baby one on a knife. So basically, you, you, you put it in, you turn it around, and then you pull it out as you're revolving it, and you get a nice plug of cheese. So you can taste a taste of that. And then you can actually push it back in the hole, do that. Keep it a bit behind, smear it on the outside to seal it, stop air getting in. It's like you were never there. So you can taste the cheeses without cutting them in half. So that's what a cheese iron is. So that's one of my cheese irons. But we don't need it right now. This cheese is well and truly cut. Let's get the knife part out, shall we? Yes, please, Chris. So let's do that. Cut a bit off. Okay, so, so there's this bit of cheese. You see that ash? So if I do that, actually, there you go. There's the ash inside the cheese, okay? So I like to eat the rind. Um, this is a natural rind. It's not cloth. It's not plastic. It's not plastic coat, which is the shiny stuff you get on Gouda. It's totally, it's totally edible, and I love the rinds. They give you a different texture, different flavour. Try them. Sometimes they don't taste great. They're even the same cheese from batch to batch. The rind can taste different. So it's worth trying it to see if you like it or not. If they can be a bit bitter sometimes, I'll just not eat it on that occasion. But I always try them because I love the difference in texture it brings as well. So let's taste this, shall we? We'll just put the whole, well, I won't put the whole bit in. I'll taste a bit of it, and then I'll have some of the cider. This is semi-soft. So it's bouncy but not runny. Um, lovely lactic acid. Lovely lactic acid. Really nice. Making my mouth water. Um, it's quite a strong mineral element to this as well, I'm thinking. Um, tiny bit of, of salt. Not loads of salt though. Just the, which, which you need salt and cheese for reasons I won't go, go, won't go into now. But it just elevates the flavour. It seasons it amongst other things that it does. So just enough salt um, to get the job done. This is quite a young uh, Morbier, I think, because as the age, it can get meatier. But I do like them when they're like this, this sort of fresh, young lactic uh, stage. I feel like so that acidity 
Some of it's got a sourness, like a sour yogurt. It's going to work well with the sugar. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. I love the texture of the rind. It's toothsome. It's, you know, it's great. Very nice, very nice, delicate. They're both pretty delicate. That's good. You know, it's not like a heavyweight against a featherweight or a bantamweight. weight. It's too, it's too, uh, what, uh, it's too lightweight, welterweights, let's call them, sort of sparring. And that works, that works. That kind of lactic freshness in that does work with the sugariness in this, the gentle sugariness in this, sugariness in this. Doesn't mask it, doesn't fight with it, works really well. They're both delicious. Oh, delicious. Mm -mm. I still feel like I'm trying to find something that works better than the Spark and Hubbard Lester that we had recently. That's a great cheese. I've got another bit of that as well. So I might have to bring that one back out again. But yeah, nice cheese. Moby got it from Mons Cheesemongers, uh, who import amazing cheeses from the continent. Plus, they sell some great British cheeses like the Spark and Hubbard Le Red Lester, for example. Um, so there you go. That is some Moby. Very nice it is too. Fresh and young. This is the Secret Orchard. Um, I think it's a really good introduction to um, uh, farmhouse side of this. Because it isn't funky, it's very pure, it's very clean. The fruit is all the talking. It's a great thing. I sell lots of it. And it's, yeah, I, I grab a bottle of this quite a lot. And the ABV, I believe, is only 5.5. Let me just check that though. 5.5. So not too strong. Not too strong. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me as always. I hope you join me again. But until then, cheers.